Governor Abelo Mohamed Matole Maradun condemns attack on his person over the recent arrest of some people in the state. Kano State Government passes law requiring girls to complete secondary school before getting married. President Muhammad Buhari left Abuja today for Peace and Development Forum in Egypt. On business, the federal government gives state government control over solid minerals. And on the international scene, China tells government offices to remove all foreign computer equipment. Welcome to Standard Voice Television News. My name is San Ahmed Sambo. Sokoto State Government is poised to bankroll 1,000 graduates in the state with 2 billion naira rolling loan to enable them participate in a pilot farming and product marketing scheme that will be supported by the flour mills of Nigeria. Governor Amin Waziri Tambol of Sokoto State revealed this during a meeting with the management of the flour mills of Nigeria in the organization's head's office in Lagos on Monday. The governor observed that the state reinvigorate its long-standing partnership with FMN with a view to deepening the existing relationship so that farmers in the state would improve on their yield, generate more income, create more jobs so that the state and the country would benefit. According to the governor, each and every beneficiary of the revolving loan scheme would be expected to cultivate value chain crops of soybeans, wheat, sesame, other exports, commodities such as gum, arabic, hibiscus, as well as garlic on a 500 hectares piece of land in different parts of Sokoto State. Governor Tambol said once the graduates are brought on board, the traditional farmers will also key in to the scheme to expand its scope and relevance in the state. He said already the state government is working on four major irrigation schemes which it hopes to utilize to fast-track partnership between it and the FMN and the drive to produce and market export crops from the state. In his address during the visit, chairman of the FMN, John Comansos, he said already the state government is working on four major irrigation schemes which it hopes to utilize to fast-track partnership between it and FMN in the drive to produce a market export crops from the state. In his address during the visit, chairman of the FMN, John Comatos, emphasized that the company is desirous of further collaboration with Sokoto State Government in areas of soybeans, maize, seeds, and irrigation, as well as development of wheat seeds varieties in the blending and distribution of fertilizers. Kano State Government has entered into a fresh five-year partnership with French government in the areas of scholarship, staff training and development, student exchange program, and research as part of efforts to boost educational development in Kano State. Worried by the sliding fortunes of education in the state, the state government has embarked on a fresh move that will change the narrative and reposition the sector for optimal delivery and qualitative service in state and the country as a whole at the tertiary level. Under the arrangement to return the alien sector on the path of reckoning, the sector has begun to witness aggressive funding, renovation of existing schools and construction of new ones and improved learning output through massive training and retraining of teachers and capacity development for lecturers at the tertiary institutions. According to the news report, the state government had recently, under Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji of Kano State, launched the free and compulsory education program to ensure that every child of school age in the state has unfettered access to quality education 
in this century. Already, no fewer than 52 mega schools are to receive direct funding from the government to actualize the free education program of Kano State Government. Similarly, under the free and compulsory education program, the government had expressed the possibility of engaging and integrating the Sangaya Islamia schools into the main education curriculum of Kano State. In view of this, uniforms and other learning and teaching facilities had already been distributed by government to some Almajri children as part of effort by Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduja's administration to integrate the children into free and compulsory education program. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, who noted that the free and compulsory education program would cost the state government 200 million naira monthly and 2.4 billion naira yearly, assured the people of Kano State of his administration readiness to carry out a successful education program in the state. Meanwhile, the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, has revealed that the education policy in the state has reduced the menace of child bride in the state. The governor disclosed this during the 2019 Human Rights Summit with the theme adopting rights-based approach in the public sector sustainable development agenda organized by the National Human Rights Commission. The governor, who was one of the awardees, also said that the al system of education is now being integrated into the modern system of education in Kano State. He explained that his government had introduced free and compulsory basic and secondary education while also taking care of out-of-school children to make sure they are given equal opportunity to education. He noted that the much talked about al system is now being integrated with modern system of education, pointing out that policy now requires that all girls in the state have to at least finish secondary school education before they are married out. Northern Nigeria and the Kano State in particular has one of the highest rates of early marriages among girls in the country. Managing Director, Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, Tadal Ahmed Kuru, observed that many airlines have failed in Nigeria because of a lot of unethical business conduct, including greed, financial rascality by their owners. Mr. Kuru, who was represented by a top official of AMCON, Tajuddin Ahmad, spoke in Lagos at the Aviation Leadership roundtable to commemorate 10th anniversary of Aviators Africa magazine. He said those who are still operational are struggling for survival due to overbearing charges and taxation by regulatory agencies in the sector. He also blamed the challenges faced by the airline operators to the unpredictable and unsustainable foreign exchange regime in the country. The Amcom boss also heaped blame on banks who rush into the business of funding aviation without requisite knowledge or understanding of the aviation business. The Director General, National Broadcasting Commission of Nigeria, Isaac Modi Bokau, has announced that the commission is on the verge of issuing additional 200 licenses for broadcasting stations in the country. He announced that Nigerian broadcasting industry is one of the leading employers of labor in the country as the industry can boast of 740 broadcasting stations, both radio and television, across the country. Mr. Kau said this while speaking at the fifth year anniversary of the Fresh Insight newspaper held at Banquet Hall opposite Government House, Elorim. He explained that the deregulation in the broadcasting industry has opened up a lot of opportunities and advantages for the people of the country. The MBC boss disclosed that the commission is currently processing additional 200 licenses for another set of broadcasting stations in the country, which will further increase the number of existing figure. He disclosed that further to that commission is working toward the possibility of having 200 channels on the platform of government digital switch free TV to allow people the opportunity to tune to different programs of their choice. President Muhammadu Buhari has today left Abuja for Aswan, Egypt to attend Peace Development Forum in Egypt. The president is being accompanied by the Egyptian ambassador to Nigeria, Asem Habafi El Sefi, Governor Ahmadu Fintri of Adamawa State, Godson Obaseki of Edo State, and Maimala Buni of Yobe State as they departed Namdi Azikwe International Airport Presidential Wing. 
Wives of the 36 state governors have been commended for the role they play in reducing the spread of maternal and child mortality in Nigeria. The commendation was made by the First Lady of Nigeria, Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Buhari, during a mid-time peer review session on Governor's Wife Advocacy Coalition held at the State House, Abuja. Mrs. Aisha Buhari said they realized the need to aggressively address the issue to avoid a situation where women will have to choose whether to give birth to a child or stay alive. The First Lady expressed her excitement over their performance, leading to several interventions for the improvement of maternal and child health in their various states, including the tracking down efforts of the wives of local government chairmen, complementing the effort of the government and their state. She said as women, mothers, they understand better than anybody the problems and the challenges being faced by the women and children in the society. Governor Bello Mohammed Matole Maradun of Zamfara State has condemned the attack on his persons over the recent arrest of some people in the state. Governor Matole, who denied having any hand in the arrest, warned mischievous elements in the state to desist from alluding the arrest of the offenders to his office. Governor Matole warned any offender who finds himself in coalition cause with the law of the land to courageously face his travels with the law and desist from the blame games on the office of the governor or his person. In a press statement signed by the special advisor to the governor of media and communications, Honorable Zelani Buffa, said the attainment of peace in the forest state, some people of the state and Nigeria have indulged themselves in making inflammatory statements and sometimes actions aimed at undermining the peace effort. He added that those arrested and taken to court willingly broke the law and were apprehended by the agents of the law, not by Governor Bello Matawali. It could be recalled that the security operatives in the state had arrested and prosecuted two aides of former Governor Abdul Aziz Yari over some unguarded security comments. The security operatives have since demanded that the suspect lead them to the bush where over 3 million weapons are alleged to have been hidden. For business news, Mariam Aminu is standing by. Mariam, if you are ready, you are on. Thank you, Sanisambu. Once again, I am Mariam Amin with Business News. The federal government said on Monday that a committee led by the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum, Kayo D. Fayemi, has started working on an arrangement that would enable states enjoy full control of the solid mineral resources in their states. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, N.S. Umakihi, said this on Monday at a retreat for critical stakeholders in national planning and developmental strategies. The joint retreat organized by the Senate Committee on National Planning and Economic Affairs in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning was meant to forge a consensus on the way forward for Nigerians' development. Umaki He was responding to a demand by panelists at the technical session who berated the current overbearing influence of the federal government on the nation's resources. The discussant also called for an arrangement that would make states to generate revenue to meet the needs of their people. The panelists included Governor Kayade Fayemi, his counterpart from Kebi State, Atiku Bagodo, and a former chairman of the National Planning Commission, Prof. Ode Ujuo. They all agreed that a robust, inclusive, and sustained national policy that would involve active participation of government at all levels was necessary to tackle the various social and economic challenges currently confronting the nation. Omaki, he noted that the era whereby states would rely on the monthly allocation from the federal accounts to meet their needs would soon be over as the federal government was already addressing certain aspects of resource control. And that's all we have on business news today. Do have a pleasant evening. Thank you, Mariam, for that report on business. And on the international scene, China has ordered that all foreign computer equipment and software be removed from government offices and public institutions across the country within three years. The Financial Times report that the government directive is likely to be a blow to the United States multinational companies such as HP, 
Dell and Microsoft and Miro's attempts by Washington to limit the use of Chinese technology as the trade war between the countries turned into a tech cold war. The Trump administration banned U.S. companies from doing business with Chinese telecom companies, while Google, Intel and Qualcomm announced they would freeze cooperation with Huawei. By excluding China in Western know-how, the Trump administration has made it clear that the real battle is about which of the two superpowers has the technological age for the next two decades. This is the first non-public directive from Beijing setting specific targets limiting China's use of foreign technology, though it is part of a wider move within China to increase its reliance on domestic technology. Replacing all the devices and software in this time frame will be challenging given that many products were developed for U.S. operating systems such as Windows. Chinese government offices tend to use desktop computers and Chinese-owned company Lenovo, but components of the computers, including processors and hard drives, are made by American companies. That's the news. Before we go, a quick look at the top stories. Governor Abelo Muhammad Matwala Maradun of Zamfara State has condemned attacks on his person about the recent arrest of some people in the state. Kano State Government passes law requiring girls to complete secondary schools before getting married. President Buhari left Abuja for Peace and Development Forum in Egypt. The federal government gives state government control over solid minerals. And on the international scene, China tells government offices to remove all foreign computer equipment. My name is Sana Ahmed Sambo. Thanks for watching and goodbye.